money cannot buy you happiness. And people are always chasing money because of some kind of happiness on the end. But really, why are people chasing money? Hey, you all, I want to ask you an important question. One of the most important questions I think you can ask is, can money buy happiness? So please pay attention to this. This is something I've learned over a lot of years through a lot of trial and error, hardship, but money cannot buy you happiness. And people are always chasing money because of some kind of happiness on the end. But really, why are people chasing money? I'll say that money is very powerful, as a very powerful alert to people. Whether it's men chasing money because they think they can get the women, or they think they can get the big houses and the cars, and the, it goes for men and women. But whatever drives you, sometimes women are driven to never be you know, dependent on anyone, that no matter at all costs, they're going to be independent. Okay, but will you get the money and then be happy and not feel alone or lonely? So what is it about money that can reward us? And this is what I want to say, and this is just my take on it, my opinion, and my experience. But money, the journey of providing value, providing a product to people, solving a problem, making a contribution to people, the striving to add value to other people's lives adds value to your life. But it's the process. The prize is in the process, not the prize is in attaining the prize. The failures you go through along the way, which suck, failures suck, but they're the opportunity to learn. In fact, I say there's no other way to actually learn and discover yourself and what you're made of and discover you know, the ability to dig deeper than the journey. And the journey includes failure, a lot of failure. But consider the greatest joy that life has to offer is this. You're working, you're striving, you're scaling a mountain and the mountain, you know, metaphorically, right? But you're scaling the mountain of being an entrepreneur or working within an organization or a company or for someone. You're scaling the mountain to grow and to better yourself. And the stakes are high, but yet you keep showing up. You keep showing up. You keep giving your best. You could see the, you know, this next level of climb reaches a plateau. And there's always plateaus, but you're scaling the mountain. And it's exciting. You're growing. It's, you know, you're living in a sense at the edge, not the edge of like excitement and adrenaline per se. That may be a part of it. And then maybe that's involved in it. There's something about the striving, you know, clinging to the mountainside, climbing the mountain, pulling yourself up when it seems very difficult or impossible. But when you scale the mountain and you pull yourself up into that next ledge, there's a plateau there, a good plateau where you rest, but it's right there. You've made that milestone. It's right there that there's growth. There's opportunity to, yes, maybe make money and earn money, but that money allows you to keep climbing, to keep making a difference for others, to continue solving the problem. It's not the arriving at the success and the having money that fulfills, because it doesn't. It's an empty package. If you've, like me, if you've earned money and a lot of money, you know that it's not the arriving. It's not the actual money that provides joy, happiness, confidence. Money doesn't deliver that. But it's whatever that commitment to keep going, to keep showing up, to keep failing, to keep brushing yourself off every time you fail, and to learn something, 
to develop your knowledge, your skills of dealing with people, your skills of handling problems, the skills of supporting, helping other people grow into becoming who they can be as you are in that same journey of discovering who you can be. As Shakespeare said, you know who you are, but you know not who you could be. I'm talking about the discovery of who you are becoming, becoming who you could be and standing in who you could be, but it opens up the next threshold of growth, the next peeling away of the layer of the onion, peeling the layer by layer, discovering what you're made of, discovering what there is underneath from your past. Maybe there's unfinished business with your parents. Maybe there's unfinished business with just dealing with difficult people that you project people from the past that have been difficult onto the people in the present. And you need to peel that layer and realize, oh, I'm bringing some past uh, difficulty, past threat, past failure forward. And to be able to give that up, let that go, forgive, step in front of it, keep your eyes on the prize of the process each step, you lose faith, you restore faith, you keep trusting in something greater, something higher, something bigger than yourself, both in your relationship to your God, your conscience, not aborting conscience in the process, because when you lose that inner voice, that still quiet voice of truth, you've abandoned conscience. You know that you're going the wrong way. You're over-efforting. You're over striving. You're trying to win something. You're grappling. You're dragging yourself through mud. And, and it's, it's over ambition, over ambitiousness that undercuts you. Well, you learn that. That's where the learning about yourself happens on the way. Or you bring too much intensity, or you bring too much expectations on others. And that sets you up. Expectations blind you. They blind you and me. So giving up expectations along the way. But you're developing skills. You're developing the ability to keep growing and to have a growing kind of mentality, a growth. It's more than mindset. You know, a mindset is set. So not talking about being set, but actually being the ability to keep settling down in order to grow up, to keep growing in your responsibility, your ability to respond, growing your skills, you're your educating yourself in one area of business or whatever you're doing in life, in work, as an entrepreneur, as an employee, as a team member, as a part of a greater organization of people, or you're working you know, solo for yourself, but your life and your work includes other people. There is an exchange there. You're giving something that solves a problem and you're solving problems that people are willing to pay for because there's value, which allows you to earn money <laughs> to keep growing and keep expanding and enjoying your life and and taking those you know opportunities to reset to you know go away with your family i know for years like i put so much value in working consistently and doing the hard things but also taking that time out to just go be with my kids go to hawaii or go to Mexico or go do service work in africa and, and create those experiences not only with people close to me in my life, family, but out to others in my world, in the world, community. But when you make a difference that has real value and gives people a new life, an opportunity to live a better life, a more connected, a more spiritual life, a life that's more connected from their creator, their God to their own true north. What's your calling? It's a good question. What is your calling? What is pulling you? I know my fundamental calling in life is that people experience something greater than themselves, really God, and that around me, people experience something greater than themselves, greater than the mindset, 
that they walked in the room with or the way they view themselves or life or others or what's possible, their potential. People are experiencing, as I'm fulfilling on my calling of people experiencing something greater than themselves, guess what I'm getting to do? I'm discovering something greater than myself, than my lower case I identity. So I invite you to take a look. Look, it's never too late. No matter what age you're at, whatever stage you're at, you can always educate yourself from right here where you are. If you're in a rut, if you're in a, in a hole, a black hole, a mental black hole, you have the ability to educate yourself. You have the ability to repent of old ways. You have the ability to begin anew, but you have to execute. You have to be in action. Really, action is the only thing that's going to make any difference, really. I mean, there's a time for non-action, but it's still inside of the world of action. But you gave yourself to the doing of something from a way of being of something greater than yourself up to something greater than yourself. Do your own soul searching in this. But I just wanted to share with you that you have the ability, as I do, at any point in time to shift, to change, to up level, to let go, to drop away, to give up old stuff, to keep pe peeling away the layers, but to keep moving forward, to stay the course. All right, my friends, stay free, stay blessed, and I look forward to being with you again next time.